In this video, you learn how to get good at guitar fast. Picking up your guitar to play is not enough to make great progress. It's a start, but it's not enough. Practice actually doesn't make perfect because it's the way you practice that really counts. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in this lesson, I'm going to show you the one thing that made a massive difference to my guitar practice. Now, this is very simple, but powerful beyond measure. And it's not going to sound that exciting to you probably when I tell you right now, but believe me, if you implement what I show you in today's video, it will make all the difference to the results you get when you're practicing your guitar. And that is engaging your brain with your fingers every moment that you are practicing. Okay, so most people practice guitar with mindless repetition. I know I certainly did for a long time. And you know, if you do that for hours and hours, you do make some progress. But mindless repetition alone is not going to cut it. Repetition is good, but it's what you're repeating and what you're thinking about when you're doing it that makes the difference. So mindlessly thinking about whatever as you practice, thinking I just need to keep doing this over and over. Well, yeah, we've all heard that practice advice before. Just keep practicing and you'll get better. Well, yes, but it really depends on what you're doing. We need a little bit more information than that. So today I'm going to show you exactly that by focusing your mind in different ways when practicing the one thing. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the main focus of today's lesson, let me just recap briefly something from a previous video. So linked in the top right corner right now is a video on setting up your practice schedule, the way to organize it. That's worth a watch. You don't have to watch that right now to understand what we're gonna cover in this video. I will briefly cover it here anyway, but that is well worth a watch too just to you know, get some further information on how to practice. I can't stress the importance of learning how to practice and to continue learning how to practice. I've been playing 30 years. The first 20 years was a lot of practicing, um, but the last 10, 12 years have been probably less practicing to be honest, but getting a lot more out of my practice, okay, with the things that I know now that I didn't know back then. So the first thing is when you're working with your guitar playing, you want to know what it is you're working on. We've got categories and we've got items. Okay, this is what I've covered in this previous video, but let's just cover it break, you know, briefly here. So you've got categories. They're the broader things that you're working on with your guitar playing, not specific things, broader things, areas of your guitar playing. So for example, um, and this is just an example, this could be different for you, but categories might include finger picking, music theory, rhythm guitar, lead guitar. Okay, they're four pretty broad areas of guitar playing. Now, items are more specific things that you do in each of those categories to move the needle forward, to make progress on those specific areas of your playing. So for example, in finger picking, you might have technique, specific techniques you're working on, patterns, pieces, and concepts. They'd be you know, items, specific things within those, but they'd be items within the category. In music theory, you might have keys, working on some chord theory, modes, modulation, changing keys. They could be some items that you're working on in music theory. Um, in rhythm guitar, some items might be strumming, chordal picking, extensions, chord changes. And in lead guitar, our fourth category there, well, you might have technique, phrasing, riffs, and improvisation. So if we put it into a mind map, it would look something like this. You've got your guitar practice. That's the central topic, right? We're practicing guitar. And then from there, we have the categories or the areas that we're working in, finger picking, rhythm guitar, lead guitar, music theory. It might be different for you, but that's our example here. And then branching out from each of those categories are examples of items. There's many items that we could work on in any one category, but there's, you know, the, the items that we've used as an example there for each category. So this is a way to organize your practice so that it's not just randomly jumping from one thing to another. And, you know, categories are finite. There's only so many categories that you're going to work with at any one time. And there's only so many categories overall. Items, well, there's thousands and thousands. I've got um, filing cabinets and hard drives full of items. And if I just looked at them randomly to practice, I'd be lost. It'd be, I wouldn't feel like I'm getting anywhere. I'd just be kind of, you know, fumbling around in the dark. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have things organized and that gets rid of a lot of overwhelm. So in a nutshell, that's sort of what the video was about. That's linked in the top right corner, but I go into more detail there. So that's worth checking out, but stay with me here now first, so that I can tell you about the concept about you know, engaging your brain with um, 
you know, the things that we're going to talk about in today's video. Okay, so as you saw there, we had categories and we had items that we're going to practice in each category. Now, that's all well and good. You got yourself organized. Excellent. And the idea is that you rotate through these things. The rotation concept is covered in the video linked in the top right corner. But even when we're rotating through the different items and categories within a practice schedule, okay, so what do you do when an item comes up? Okay, how do you practice that item? So we're getting into the more sort of micro detail here of your practice session. So it's very simple. Here's the template that you're going to use. Looks really complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a rectangular shape and then we've got lines coming out either side of that rectangular shape. That is very, very powerful. It doesn't look like anything much, right? But as you'll see here, what we're going to do is this is a template, if you like, for the item that you're going to work with. You're going to have different focus areas, focus area one, two, three, and four. You might have more focus areas. You might have less focus areas. This is okay. It just depends on what you're doing. Let's have a look at some concrete examples so it makes more sense to you. Okay, so let's say that we are working on our finger picking. Okay, and the item, so the category is finger picking. The item is going to be finger picking patterns. Okay, that's the item. So what we want to do is focus our engage our mind with what we're doing, playing finger picking patterns, but looking at it from different angles that we need to to master whatever sort of finger picking pattern we might be playing. So for example, we'd need to work on efficiency, okay, which means you know the, the efficient movement of your finger picking hand. Okay, you'd want to make sure that it's making small movements, you're not jumping around making these large movements which slows you down and is inefficient. Okay, so that's one area that you want to focus on. Another area might be the accuracy of the finger picking pattern. So you want to make sure that the correct fingers, for example, are plucking the correct strings in accordance to the pattern you're playing. And that you know you're doing that on a, a consistent basis, you're building on the accuracy. So that's another area you'd want to focus on. Then again, application. How about taking the finger picking pattern and working on applying it to different chord progressions? So you're actually taking the pattern and creating music with it. And of course, you could focus on tension, making sure you're not tensing up when playing the pattern, that there's no unwanted or needed tension, just the optimum amount of tension required to play the pattern. That's just four areas that you could focus on when working on a finger picking pattern. There could be more. Now, you can't think of all those things at the same time. Or well, you can try, but <laughs> your attention is going to be very divided. What you need to do is rotate your focus through each of those areas one at a time. So you might be working on your finger picking pattern and in your mind, you're really focusing on your picking fingers, your picking hand fingers and making sure you're looking at them and making sure they're making small movements. You might do that for a couple of minutes. Then you're going to switch your focus. You're still doing the same thing fundamentally, working on the finger picking pattern, but now your mind is rotated to accuracy and you're making sure your fingers, correct fingers are plucking the correct strings. And that's where 100% of your focus is. So if your fingers are moving a little inefficiently while you're working on making sure the right fingers pluck the right strings, that's fine. Efficiency gets its time in the spotlight, if you like. So don't worry about that. Your focus right then and there in that moment is the accuracy. Then you might take the pattern and apply it to something for 10, 15 minutes or so. Okay, um, a chord progression or two. So there you're not going to focus on the accuracy. I mean, you want to be accurate, but it's not your main focus. And the efficiency is where it's at at that moment. The focus is the accuracy, uh, not the accuracy, the application of the pattern to you know, the core progression that you might be applying it to. And then you might spend some time, even just a few minutes, just being aware of tension, whether it's in your picking hand, your fretting hand, anywhere in your body. You're just wanting to relax and just have the optimum amount of tension as you practice the, the finger picking pattern. So you rotate your focus through these four areas in this case, okay? Now notice your brain is engaged the whole time when you do this. Okay, your brain is engaged the whole time. So your practice time will fly when this happens because you're not focused on, you know, is my 20 minutes up or is my half hour up or whatever it might be. You're really engaged. You're not thinking about what you're going to do later that day or tomorrow or on the weekend. You're just fully present. Present is the word. Present with your plane when you're practicing. Okay, and not trying to think of everything at once. Never works. It's not effective. Don't try it. Just rotate your focus. So you might spend just a couple of minutes in each of these areas. Perhaps application, you might spend a little bit more time. Even a single session 
on the finger picking patterns might just be on application. You can rotate through these different areas across sessions too. One session might be on the efficiency and accuracy. The next session might just be on application. That's okay, it can spread across different sessions. It can look differently for you. I just want you to focus on the principle or the concept here of having an item that's part of a category, organized in your schedule, and rotating your focus in different areas as you work on that particular um, item, being the finger picking pattern here. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples to really make this point clear so that you know, can make sure you're understanding what I'm getting at here. So let's say you're gonna work on music theory and your, you know, your, your item that you're gonna work on under that category of music theory is keys. So what are some you know, things that you'll probably do and rotate your focus through when working on keys? Well, you could, you know, harmonization, um, you know, the, the, the chords in the key, harmonizing the key. You might work on spelling out the key, knowing the notes in the key. You might work on arpeggios and what, you know, the spelling of the chords in the key. Or you might work on the scales, so different scales, different keys, whatever. It's, it's not so much the point exactly where your focus is, it's the fact that you have your focus specifically on one thing as you work on that item and then you rotate through several other things. Never on two things at once, only one thing at one time here at this point. Let's have a look at another example. So let's say that you're working on your rhythm guitar playing. That was one of our categories and you're going to specifically work with chord changes. Okay, well, what are you going to do with chord changes? Are you going to just sit there like a lot of people do and just, you know, belt out a chord change over and over mindlessly hoping that it's going to get better or one day I'll get it one day? Not really, not if you don't have your mind in the right place. So in this example, we might work on the efficiency of our fretting hand making the chord change or again, focusing on the tension when making the chord change, making sure we're not gripping the neck and squeezing it too hard or the consistency of the chord change. Can you make a clean chord change nine out of 10 times? That'd be a good consistency rate to aim for. And your fretting hand, you know, making the chord change, your fingers moving efficiently, etc. okay? So these are some of the areas that you would focus on when working on a chord change. Again, individually, one at a time, separated, okay? Not trying to do all those things at once. That's a lot to think about when you're making a chord change. Are your fingers efficient? Is it the tension correct? Is, you know, one thing at a time, that's the key, keeping the mind engaged. And let's say in your lead guitar playing, you're gonna work with riffs and lines, okay? That's the specific item that you're gonna work on under the you know, key sort of parent um, area of, of uh, lead guitar. And you might work with application, so take any one of the riffs and learn to apply it to different musical situations or you might work with your picking hand and whatever it might be doing in that specific riff maybe you need to work on a particular part of it for accuracy or speed or something like that integration can you take the riff and integrate it into other riffs or parts of your plane that's really really important or you might work with the fretting hand part of the riff and maybe some fingering that you need to coordinate or whatever it might be. Again, it could be anything. Um, these are just examples, okay? The key is that you have a central item that you're working on and then you have different areas that you are focusing on, engaging your brain with, and you are rotating through those. And it could be over a 10 minute period, it could be over a couple of days. It just depends on what you're doing and how much time you need to spend or have to spend in each of those areas. The bottom line, engage your brain at every minute of your practice. If you do that and halved your practice time, you would still make far, far, far better progress than you would otherwise. It's really, really powerful. It takes effort, it takes more mental energy, so it will take effort. It's not, you know, necessarily easy. You've got to focus, but that's why sometimes smaller, more bite-sized practice sessions when you do this are more effective because of that. Uh, requirement of really focusing your mental energy on the task at hand. But do that and I will guarantee you, you'll get much, much better results. If you would like help with your finger picking, the kind of help that gets you results in the most direct, efficient, fun way possible, then check out the Ultimate Finger Picking Guitar Course, a complete system for finger picking acoustic guitar, so simple even a beginner can learn it. I've carefully designed this course to do all the heavy lifting for you as far as knowing exactly what to do, how to do it, and when to do it in regard to mastering the art of finger picking guitar. All you have to do is follow the pathway I've laid out for you. 
In the Ultimate Finger Picking Guitar course, you will learn and master all the key concepts, methods, strategies, and techniques needed for finger picking. So you'll never put your guitar down in frustration again, thinking, how the hell do I do this? You will also discover the exact order in which to do things, avoiding the all too common mistakes most people make when learning to finger pick guitar, saving you precious time and frustration. Have your hand held every step of the way with the ultimate finger picking guitar course. It will take you from wherever you are at right now with your finger picking to where you would like to be, enjoying every part of the process along the way. So click the link in the description below the video and check out the ultimate finger picking guitar course. Let me know in the comments ways you have of practicing guitar. Do you have some ways that you could add to what we've covered in today's video? Do you have any questions on today's video? I read all the comments, so I would love to hear anything you have to say or offer any suggestions for future videos. I will answer all comments that you leave below. So feel free to do so. If you like this video, then hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, I very much appreciate you being here for this particular lesson and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.